Hello, my dear students. Welcome, welcome on this new session. This new session, as you see here, is about antiarrhythmic agents. Arrhythmias supposed to be one of the complex chapters in pharmacology, and we are trying to resolve it. Okay. Uh, at the beginning, I am trying to tell you what are the classes of the drugs, so that you have a brief idea before going to the actual discussion. Uh, class one antiarrhythmic agents are sodium channel blockers. Class 2 are beta blockers. Class 3 are those drugs which prolong the phase 3. Just remember right now, it prolongs the phase 3. And this phase 3 is related to repolarization. And this is about the outward potassium current. Do I repeat it? Class 3 are those drugs which prolong the phase 3. This phase 3 is repolarization. And this repolarization happens when the potassium goes out. Just keep it in mind. We'll come to it later on in details. And the class 4 is calcium channel blockers. So basically there are 4 uh, group classes of antiarrhythmic agents. You can add another agent, sometimes they call it class 4 like, or you can say class 5, or in my opinion I just say other agents, because they have got different kinds of actions. So we're going to keep it in mind, class 1 is going to block sodium channels, class 2 will be beta blockers. Class 3, those which prolong the phase 3 of the action potential phase and they are going to act on repolarization, that's the phase 3 which is produced by the outward current of potassium and class 4 will be the calcium channel blockers. Let's go to the slide and view the slide and you've got to understand these basic things so that later on you will feel, oh, it's so easy. Here are the action potential phases. And the phases are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Please have a look at the slide. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. What happens in phase 0? Come to this column. What happens in phase 0? Come to this column. The third column is showing you about the ionic flux. What is happening during phase 0 is the sodium enters. So in the next column again, I am showing entry of sodium. If my arrow is going to the right side, you consider it as entry. And if it's coming in the reverse direction, you consider it as the exit. So here, phase 0 is entry of sodium. Sodium enters and sodium entry triggers the depolarization. So this is rapid depolarization. We move on to the next phase. That's phase 1. During phase 1, see the detail. The potassium goes out. So it's exit of potassium. I have showed a reverse arrow and when potassium goes out, that's rapid repolarization. So phase 0 is depolarization, sodium entry. Phase 1 is repolarization, that's potassium exit. Then what happens during the phase 2 is the calcium starts entering. And the calcium starts entering the cell, I have shown calcium arrow, that's entry. And this leads to a sustained depolarization and reaches the peak of the curve so that's called as plateau next one phase 3 again the potassium goes out this one potassium goes out so because potassium goes out again it's repolarization when I was describing to you the preliminary discussion the classes of the drugs I was here class 3 they prolong phase 3 so this is this phase 3 Potassium going out, repolarization. This is affected by the class 3 agents. Easy to remember. Fix it in your mind. Class 3, phase 3. So you won't have any doubt. We move on to the next one. And that is phase 4. During the phase 4, again there is slow entry of sodium and potassium. So I have shown here like this. Sodium and calcium. I said potassium, sorry. Sodium and calcium. Sodium and calcium both enter, so that's entry, that's slow depolarization and this corresponds to the diastole. So, zero sodium entry, one potassium exit. Phase two, calcium entry, phase three, potassium exit and phase four, finally, again the entry of sodium and calcium. I showed it to you on this table because you should have a background 
of what curve you are going to look at. Let's move on to the next slide. And next slide is showing you the actual curve, showing the action potential phases. It's normal. So now on the background of what we learned through the table, let's try to understand. Follow the cursor please. Look at this. There is entry of sodium. That's phase zero. That's why you get this depolarization. That's why you see this upstroke. Next we move on to the next phase after sodium entry. The potassium comes out and that's why there's repolarization. We call it phase one. Next there's entry of calcium and it reaches the height, reaches the peak. That's called as plateau. So this is your phase two. After this again potassium starts going out. So I have written outward potassium current and that corresponds to the phase three and this is repolarization and finally there is a slow entry of sodium and calcium and you get this sustained type of depolarization here and this matches with the diastole so that's phase 4 so that's diastolic depolarization so phase 0 1 2 3 4 I feel it's quite clear now we go further this is the classification look at the slide I'm keeping the slide for a pretty long time I want to discuss the smaller details class 1 we said class 1 are sodium channel blockers so if they are blocking the sodium channels if you consider where is the sodium channel where is the sodium entry then this was happening during the phase 0 that was the beginning sodium was going inside and you got a peak you got the upstroke so that's phase 0 Finally, sodium also entered during phase 4. So, the class 1 drugs are going to prolong the phase 0 and 4. This is going to be the common action for all class 1 agents. I am saying common actions because there are 3 subgroups, subclasses of class 1 agents. Class 1A, class 1B and class 1C. As far as class 1A are concerned, come to this particular row class 1a yes they are sodium channel blockers they are going to prolong phase 0 and 4 in addition they also prolong the phase 3 repolarization which is potassium exit i hope you are getting now class 1a is acting on the sodium channels prolonging phase 0 and 4 and it has got an additional action on the phase 3 repolarization that's the potassium exit and the class 1A agents are quinidine, procainamide and disopyramide. Let's go to the class B, Cla class 1B. Class 1B does have the sodium channel blocking effect, the usual effect prolonging phase 0 and 4. In addition to that, they also have a, had an effect on the phase 3 repolarization, that's potassium exit, but the effect is exactly opposite and they shorten the phase 3 repolarization. Class 1A was prolonging the phase 3 repolarization. Class 1B shortens the phase 3 repolarization. That's the potassium exit. So class 1B is lidocaine, mexilatin, tokenide and phenytoin. Now we move to class 1C. Class 1C again is a sodium channel blocker. Is going to prolong the phase 0 and 4 as it is. And what about phase 3? No effect on phase 3. So this is the class which will have only the effect on the, sodash, uh, on the sodium channel. So there will be prolongation of phase 0 and 4 and no effect on potassium exit or there is no effect on the phase 3 repolarization. So class 1 C drugs are flaconide, propafinon and morizicin. So that's about class 1. And here on the board I had just written sodium channel blockers because that's their basic action common to class 1 A, B, C all the three class 1 A have additional action prolonging phase 3 class 1 B has additional action but it's exactly opposite shortening the phase 3 and class 1 C no action on phase 3 I'm sure it's clear now we move to the next group that's class 2 and class 2 are beta blockers and they are going to affect all the phases so we are not going to speak about 
must speak much about the action potential phases of beta blockers. You already know what are the beta blockers, examples, metoprolol, propranolol, asmolol, and sotelol. And let me remind you, asmolol is an ultra short acting agent. It's very rapidly acting agent. Let's move on to this class 3. And the class 3 was about the outward potassium current and the repolarization. So class 3 are the drugs which act on this phase 3, that's the potassium exit, and they inhibit the potassium exit. So this phase is going to happen much more slowly. So I'm saying they prolong the phase 3 or they prolong the potassium exit and they prolong this phase of repolarization. All the class 3 agents are here on the slide. They are divided further into three classes, pure class 3, ibutilide and dofetilide. Mixed class 3 is sotalol, amiodinone and bretilium. And novel class 3, that's the new agents, azimilide and dronedirone. I said about mixed class 3, that's sotalol, amiodinone and bretilium. Let me ask you a question. I said sotalol here. Did you hear this sotalol before on this classification in some other group? Yes, you heard it because it's a beta blocker. So look at this. I'm showing the cursor at both the places. Sotalol is appearing at two places. It's a class 2 agent plus it's a class 3 agent. Now because it's got these two types of actions, we are calling these drugs as mixed class 3 because it doesn't have the characteristic only characteristic action of prolonging phase 3. It does have this, this action. In addition, it's a beta blocker. So I am calling it having mixed action. In this group, there are two more agents. That's amiodiron and pretilium. After this, amiodiron has got many effects. Although I have put it in class 3, it's, it's got a sodium channel blocking action. It's also got some weak calcium channel blocking action. It's also got some beta blocking action. I hope you realize why I'm putting it and calling it mixed class 3 agent. So I think it's clear class 3 prolongs the phase 3. That's the repolarization or the potassium exit. And ibutilide and dofetilide are pure class 3. Azimilide and dronedron are novel class 3. And in between are the mixed class 3 because these drugs have got some additional actions apart from their original action that's the class 3 action. We, let's move on to the next group and that's class 4 and that's called calcium channel blockers. And I hope you know calcium channel blockers either act predominantly on the heart or act predominantly on the periphery. And those who act predominantly on the heart, they are going to be useful for arrhythmias. Those who act predominantly on the periphery, they are dipins, nephrodipin, nicardipin, etc. Naturally, we will not speak about these drugs on this particular chapter because they predominantly act on the blood vessels. Whereas beta pamil and diltism, they act predominantly on the heart. So we are going to consider them. So beta pamil and diltism are the calcium channel blockers which are going to be antiarrhythmic agents. Now what do they do? We have to concentrate on now calcium and try to remember what are the phases during which the calcium entered. If you remember, during phase 0, sodium entered, phase 1, potassium went out, and phase 2, calcium entered. And this was the plateau, or this was the peak. So this is one place where the calcium channel blockers are going to act. That's phase 2. Second region where the calcium channel blockers will act will be another entry of calcium, which is the diastolic depolarization. So that was phase 4. Naturally, calcium channel blockers will have action on phase 4 and phase 2. And what are they? They are calcium channel blockers. So they are going to prolong these phases. They are going to prolong the phase 4 and they are going to produce an effect of prolonging the phase 2. So what's going to happen is calcium was entering and you were getting a plateau you are getting a rise. This rise will be less now. The curve will be seen to be shortened now. And also it will be prolonged. 
because there will be prolongation of the calcium entry. So that's class 4 calcium channel blockers act mainly on the phase 4 and phase 2 vera palming and diltiazem. Look at the table what is the last row about. The last row is about all other agents various authors call it class 4 like or some other authors call it class 5 I am just calling it as others. So whatever people are calling class 4 like I have put it here. Class 5 also have put for your knowledge and I am just calling them other agents and there are many other agents which have got these actions. 